Hey everyone and welcome to the Sunny News. Today is a very special edition of the Sunny News because I am on the world's most famous beach, which happens to be my hometown, Daytona Beach. That's why I'm really excited about today's video because it was prompted by a message I got on Twitter by someone living in Scotland who was curious about visiting Florida. She asked me, was it better to take a taxi or a bus from the Miami airport to South Beach? And that's when I thought it's definitely time for a video on what British people need to know about visiting Florida. Make sure you watch until the end for a very valuable tip on a very special dollar that would be worth a lot to have during your trip to Florida. People come to Florida to enjoy our tropical weather. But what you might not know is we experience hurricane season from June 1st to November 30th every year. Now the past few years there has been a hurricane that has come near Florida or touched down. While you might not experience a hurricane while you're here, it is very likely that you will see many thunderstorms. Thunderstorms in Florida from my experience are much different from London. I think they're much more violent and you will experience a lot of lightning. I've also lived in Florida and experienced a tornado, so don't be too alarmed if while you're watching telly while you're here, you see tornado warnings. If in your weather forecast for your trip, you see that there's gonna be thunderstorms every day, they'll probably happen around two o'clock and last about 20, 30 minutes. Now, because of our tropical climate, we also have some other things that are not too much fun to experience. We'll start with snakes. There's a good chance if you're staying at the Disney Resort that you're probably not gonna see a snake, but should you go visit maybe friends or family who live outside of the resort and have a house in Florida, there is a chance that you could see a snake. It's more likely that you will see lizards and a lot of them. And be ready for the bugs. We have very, very, very tiny bugs that we refer to as noceums, and we have a ton of mosquitoes. If you read my blog about what British people should pack for visiting Florida, I recommend some products that you can buy ahead of time that'll prevent you from getting bitten by mosquitoes. And then of course we have some very big things that you might not think about. I've never seen them, but I've seen warning signs for them on streets and that's panthers and jaguars. My next piece of advice is what actually prompted the video and that's transportation. Now when I asked my husband, Mr. Sunny, a Londoner, what advice he would give to British people visiting Florida, he said, please let everyone no, you can't just walk to the shops. Our public transportation system is very different from what you'll experience in London and perhaps the rest of the UK. I have never taken public transportation in Florida. And to my Twitter follower who asked what the best advice was from the Miami airport, without a doubt, it is to take a taxi. I would suggest on a trip to Florida that you rent a car. The only exception I might add to that is if you plan on making your entire trip on the Disney or Universal property because they have shuttles that'll take you just about anywhere. As you can see, our roads here are really wide. That makes it especially difficult to just walk from your hotel to go to a restaurant or even grab a bottle of wine from a convenience store. Now, if you plan on renting a car, you'll probably take I-4 if you're traveling anywhere between Tampa and Daytona Beach. It runs southeast, southwest. Anybody from Florida knows it's pretty much a parking lot. Now, if you're traveling up and down the East Coast, it may look like you have three options to go up and down the state. That would be I-95, A1A, or US-1. You want to take I-95. If you take the other two options, they'll certainly be scenic, but the speed limit is like 35 miles an hour or 50 miles an hour, and it will probably take you days longer to get somewhere. If you're from Florida and you'd like to add any comments about points I've made in the video, please make sure to do that. And of course, British tourists, any other questions that you have, I love answering them in the comments. Now, my next piece of advice involves a 
little specific information on terminology. You need to know that on the East Coast is the Atlantic Ocean. The West Coast we refer to as the Gulf. If you're coming to Florida, chances are you want to experience the Atlantic Ocean or the Gulf of Mexico, and maybe you'd even like to see some sea life. I think there's a good chance you could see dolphins or porpoises. There's a very good chance on the Gulf Coast that you could see a manatee or sea cow. I don't think you'll actually see a gator but you could. What you need to know is don't underestimate an alligator. They are actually very fast when they want to be. We do have plenty of sharks. Be careful when you're out in the ocean. Maybe talk to the lifeguard ahead of time. Naturally, for tourism, we're not gonna advertise the amount of shark bites that happen, but they do. Please don't step on a jellyfish. While you might not be able to see them as easily as other things that are on the beach, you'll definitely feel one if you step on it. If you speak Spanish, you're definitely at an advantage in Florida, especially in Miami, where you'll find many street signs are in both English and Spanish. We do have a very high Hispanic population here and that's because we have so many residents who are from either Mexico, Puerto Rico, or Cuba. So that brings me to the cuisines that I recommend while you're here. Obviously seafood is something you're gonna want to experience but also I recommend Mexican food and sushi because in my experience it is much cheaper here than it is in London. Two cuisines that my husband recommends that you stay away from are Indian and Chinese. They are just not the same as what you would get in London. Mr. Sunny feels that the fish that we use for fish fries is a little bit weird. He thinks we use mahi-mahi and we don't use haddock and cod, which are things that he's used to. Another thing you'll find here that's more prevalent than in the UK is all-you-can-eat buffets. The best thing I can really say about that experience is they are really cheap. You should definitely visit a beach bar while you're here. My favorite in Daytona is Racing's North Turn. When you do go to the beach, please be prepared for everyone to be very friendly. Nearly everyone that passes you while you're walking on the beach is going to say hello. Our final tip involves Florida money. Well, not really. But just before we get to it, let me just remind you, if you found the information valuable in the video, please pin, like, or share it, especially if you know someone who's visiting Florida. Subscribe to the sunny news so you don't miss any information about events happening in London or sunny destinations around the world. The last thing I want to tell you about is something that's very common knowledge to Floridians and that's what a sand dollar is. A sand dollar is related to the starfish and they're more common on the Gulf Coast because the water on that side of Florida is calmer. I want you to go to Google and research how you can find five doves inside a whole sand dollar. As always, thank you for watching. Rolling. <laughs> like to take off your sunglasses. I'm filming right now, but I won't use this. Okay. Actually, a pretty good chance that you could see either dolphins or porphins. Porphins. <laughs> That's a blooper. <laughs> Hurricane season from June 1st. Fuck. Oh, it's hot. <laughs>